What's up YouTube? My name is Clickwood and I am back again today bringing you guys a new video from my Madden 25 Ultimate Team Budget Series and today you're going to be learning how to get four awesome linebackers for under 30,000 coins. And better yet, I'm going to be showing you why some of these linebackers that we're going to see in this video are just as good, if not better, in some areas than linebackers that might cost you over 300,000 coins. Now, if you're new to the series, welcome, but I also want to make sure that you take a look in the description below because you're going to find some links to the other videos that we've done in this series where we go over things like the offensive line, the defensive line, cornerbacks, we did safeties, wide receivers, tight ends, fullbacks. So look down there. You're going to be able to find those links to those videos. Check them out. See if there's anything you can learn from them after you're done watching this video. So with that being said, let's get right into the comparisons today because I don't want to waste any time. And what we're going to do is start off with the left outside linebacker position. And the two cards that we're going to be comparing today are the 97 overall playoff edition Terrell Suggs team MVP card and the 89 overall left outside linebacker Ryan Kerrigan gold card. And if you've watched much of this series, you're going to see that we don't typically include many gold cards. And that's because usually the gold cards don't have a high overall ranking, which means that, you know, they're typically lacking in certain areas. Uh, and the Ryan Kerrigan card is definitely lacking in a couple areas. But if you take a look at the stats that we have here between these two, you're going to see that they're actually very comparable in most of these key areas. So today, the categories that we want to take a look at are speed, awareness, man coverage, zone coverage, catching, tackling, hit power, block shed, power move, finesse move, and then of course we look at price. And then the last thing that we look at, it doesn't really matter too much for linebackers, but it's still something to think about, is the height. So first of all, you're going to notice that Terrell Suggs is better in almost every category than Ryan Kerrigan. The only thing that Kerrigan's actually better at is catching and tackling, and he's six better in catching, which at a 63 overall, he's still not great at catching, and then he's one better at tackling. Other than that, the Terrell Suggs card is definitely better in every area. However, it is 43,000 coins versus Ryan Kerrigan being only 5,000 coins. So the price difference is pretty big. It's more than eight times as expensive for the Terrell Suggs card. So we really have to consider at this point then what it is that we want this position to be doing. And in this case, we're kind of looking at pass rushers. Left outside linebackers in this game aren't typically too good at coverage. Uh, that's typically reserved for the right outside linebacker position and the middle linebacker positions. So at left outside linebacker, we need to look at the pass rushing stats here. And so if we look at those, the block shedding on these two cards is very similar. 91 for, for Terrell Suggs and only a 90 for Ryan Kerrigan. But, you know, it's only a one difference. And then the power move is only a three difference. Terrell Suggs being a 96 and Ryan Kerrigan being a 93. Where the big difference, of course, comes in is the finesse move. And the finesse move for Terrell Suggs being an 88 is 14 better than the Ryan Kerrigan. Now, that doesn't actually mean that the Ryan Kerrigan's going to be terrible at getting to the quarterback. With a 90 block shed and a 93 power move, that's really how he's going to do his damage. So, when you look at these two cards, you're going to kind of wonder, why is Terrell Suggs a 97 overall while Ryan Kerrigan's only an 89 overall? Well, of course, the big difference being finesse move and then the other thing, awareness. So Terrell Suggs does have 91 awareness. Kerrigan lags behind with an only an 81 awareness. But for the most part, awareness isn't that important when you're a pass rusher. Your job is pretty simple. There isn't a lot of awareness needed. You pretty much just need to go after the quarterback. Now, of course, there's going to be those times where awareness does matter and it's helpful to have a guy that can play the run better or read the read option better but Ryan Kerrigan's going to do an okay job at that and I think that's so circumstantial that we don't really need to say that the Kerrigan card is horrible because it does it only has an 81 awareness so overall I think that the Kerrigan card at 5,000 coins is going to be one that's going to get you plenty of pass rush and it's absolutely worth 5,000 coins I've actually seen it lower than that on the auction block but you should definitely be able to find it for somewhere around 5,000 coins, which makes it a great buy. So now let's take a look at the right outside linebacker position. 
And the first set that we're going to look at here, we actually are going to have two for right outside linebacker. But the first grouping is going to be the 93 overall elite Brian Arakpo and the 99 overall Robert Mathis. Okay, guys? I know. Robert Mathis versus Brian Arakpo, that's crazy, right? Robert Mathis is 82,000 coins. He's probably one of the best pass rushers in this game. Absolutely true. However, I think that there are areas where the Brian Arakpo is just as good, if not better, than the Robert Mathis. So, first things first, yes, the speed, four difference. Robert Mathis at 90 speed is one of the fastest linebackers in this game. He does have great awareness as well, just like our last comparison, 11 difference between these two cards. 84 awareness for Brian Arakpo versus 95 for Robert Mathis. And then you take a look at the pass rushing attributes. And the Brian Arakpo card actually has a better block shed, which is surprising to me. I was I was very astonished to see that Brian Arakpo would have a higher block shed than Robert Mathis, who led the league in sacks this year. But that's the way that it is. And then the Mathis is actually better at both uh, power move and finesse move, of course. Now, the Mathis is going to have 98 finesse move versus the Arakpo only being a 78 finesse move. And of course, that's hugely important. Um, I can't overstate that the 98 overall attribute here for Robert Mathis is, is almost unstoppable. I mean, he's going to get to the quarterback most plays if you give him enough time. But at the same time, though, if you look at the power move for Brian Arakpo, his 87 versus Mathis is 90. They're very similar to one another. And when you consider the block shed, that pretty much evens it out in those categories. So, yes, Mathis does have a way better finesse move. Can't even argue that. But we're looking at the price of these two cards. And Brian Arakpo at 7,000 coins versus Robert Mathis being 82,000 coins. I mean, yeah, it would be great if you could afford the Robert Mathis. But if you can't, Arakpo is going to give you a lot of the same type of production for way less coins. So I think he's a really great value and definitely one of the best linebacker values in this whole game. So now let's take a look at the other comparison that we have here. And this is the grouping that is going to be a little bit more focused on actually covering tight ends specifically. And the two cards that we're going to be comparing here are the 95 overall Elite Alec Ogletree, which goes for 42,000 coins and the 94 overall Elite Levante David card that goes for just 6,500 coins. Now, of course, first thing that you're going to notice when you look at these two cards is that there's really not a whole lot of areas that the Levante David card is better in. However, he is very good in awareness, which is kind of surprising because most of the time the cards that are lower overall have lower awareness. Not in this case. He's actually six higher, which is good for coverage. He's also actually a better tackler at 95 tackling, which is four better than the Alec Ogletree card. They are actually also the same in man coverage, both of them 75 overall, and David is only one worse in zone coverage. So they're, for all intents and purposes, they're basically the same exact thing in terms of the actual specifically coverage attributes. And while it's true that the Alec Ogletree card it has a higher block shed, he's got better hit power, He's got a better power move and a better finesse move, but neither of them is a really great pass rusher. So we really want them to be able to be effective in run stopping, which they both will be, and they're both going to be great in coverage. They're not the best coverage linebackers in this game, but they're both very, very good. Definitely good enough to be the starting linebacker on most teams. And when you consider the fact that the Levante David card is just about as good as the Alec Ogletree card in most of these uh, major attributes, if not better in some of them. I just think at 6,500 coins, he's somebody that you have to add if you're looking for a budget right outside linebacker that can cover. Now onto the middle linebacker position. And you're going to see first that we actually did change around some of the attributes that we're comparing here. I removed both of the pass rushing attributes and I replaced them with pursuit and play recognition. And the reason for that is because I think that pursuit and play recognition are two of the attributes that are going to be most needed to worry about run stopping. And that's really what the middle linebacker position is primarily used for. He's also, you know, someone that can be versatile. He has to be somewhat good enough to be able to cover uh, tight ends over the middle and potentially uh, receivers over the middle in zone coverage. But I think that 
the pass rushing attributes are really kind of not quite as important here. So the first comparison that we're going to make here is the 97 overall Luke Keekley Elite card. And we're going to compare it to the 92 overall Paul Warlow uh, Elite card as well. Now, the only thing that the Paul Warlow card is actually better at is hit power. And it's only better by two. But it is... It is exactly the same in both man coverage and zone coverage, and it's got great block shedding at 90, it's got 93 pursuit and 93 play recognition. A very, very good card in those attributes, and those are really the most important things, along with speed. And while the Luke Keekley does have 90 speed, the Paul Warlow is still going to be a very, very good card with 87 speed. Where he does kind of fall off is actually in the awareness attribute because he is only an 82 awareness, but he makes up for it with a 95 tackle. And so when he gets close to guys with that pursuit and that play recognition, he's going to wrap up and make the tackle every single time. You really don't have to worry about him getting trucked or him getting juked or anything like that. He's going to take guys down. This is a very, very good card, very underrated for just 7,500 coins. And when you compare it to the Luke Keekley card, which is gonna cost you 160,000 coins, oh man, I, it's just, it's not even close to being the same, in my opinion, in terms of value. Uh, the Warlow card is a great, great value. Luke Keekley is kinda overpriced, all things considered. But, you know, if you can afford it, why not? He's, I mean, it's a great card. But I, to me, 160,000 coins is just too much when you can get a very, very good card in Paul Warlow for 7,500. Now, the other cards that we're going to compare here are going to be the 93 overall D'Amico Ryan's Playoff Edition and the 97 overall Patrick Willis Elite card. And again, these two are very different in price. The D'Amico Ryans is just 6,500 coins, whereas the Patrick Willis is 75,000 coins. But there are some areas where the D'Amico Ryans is actually better. Surprisingly, again, it actually has higher awareness. It's only one better at a 92 versus the Patrick Willis being a 91. But it actually also has better catching statistics. So it is going to be able to make more interceptions if it is in coverage. And it's still very, very good with a 94 tackle. It has 88 block shed, 94 pursuit, 95 play rec. The pursuit and play rec are actually the same as the Patrick Willis, which is a little bit surprising to me. Uh, but the hit power for the D'Amico Ryans is, I think, where he kind of falls off. He's only got 82 hit power, whereas Patrick Willis, as you can imagine, one of the hardest hitting linebackers in this whole game. He's got 95 hit power with 97 tackle. I mean, this card is a ridiculously good middle linebacker card. He also has 91 speed, whereas D'Amico Ryans has only got 86 speed. But 86 speed is still very usable for most teams. And uh, I don't think that you're going to be too disappointed in that in most cases. Although, of course, you know, again, if you can afford this Patrick Willis card, by all means, this is a better card. I'm not trying to say that the, the D'Amico Ryans card is better, but... You know, considering that not everybody has 75,000 coins to spend on a card, D'Amico Ryans is still going to serve its purpose. It's still going to be a very, very good linebacker for just 6,500 coins. So, all things considered, uh, D'Amico Ryans, he, he is going to be worse in coverage. Uh, he's five worse in man coverage and four worse in zone coverage. But he's still going to be very, very good for, mo for a middle linebacker. And he's great against the run with that 94 tackle and, and the high pursuit and play rack. So, you know, to be honest with you guys, if you put together the D'Amico Ryans with the Paul Warlow card as your middle linebackers, if you run a 34 or pick whichever one of the two you like better for your style of play, I think that you're going to be very happy with these two cards. You're not going to have to spend a ton. You can pair them up with the other linebackers that we put in this video, and you're going to be able to have a really, really great linebacker group, and it's not going to break the bank, so that's always great. So anyways, guys, that's going to do it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. If you did, please hit that like button. It really means a lot to me. It helps my videos grow. And if you could leave a comment as well, let me know what position you want to see next. If you have any questions on anything, I can answer those. If you have any suggested cards for other people in the comments as well, that's always appreciated. So thank you guys for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I will talk to you beautiful bitches again soon.